Hi guys, Mr. Edwards here, and we're looking at digital citizenship today. So, let's get into it. Okay, so for us to understand what digital citizenship is, I thought it's really important that we define what a digital citizen is, all right? So, if we move down here, it says a digital citizen refers to any person utilizing information technology, or IT, in order to engage in society, politics, and government. So hopefully when you read that, you realize that that's talking about pretty much all of us, okay? The line there where it says engage in society, if you're using any type of social media, that means you, all right? On the right is a little digital citizen, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. Okay, so digital citizenship isn't just about recognizing and dealing with online hazards, it's about us building safe spaces and communities online. It's about us managing our personal information well. It's about being internet savvy. Being internet savvy refers to being able to use the internet appropriately and effectively to find the information and the things that we need. Okay, so what we've done here is we've broken down digital citizenship into four different aspects. Now, the first one is digital conduct. The second is digital well-being. Third is digital relationships, and the last one whoop, is digital footprint. All right, big feet there. All right, so moving on, guys, we'll get into our first aspect. Okay, digital conduct. Uh, this refers to the way that you behave online. It's an important concept to understand, I believe. And this is because people online might act, might not act in the way that they would in person. All right, so that's why I think it's important to understand. Um, for an example. Someone may leave hurtful or aggressive comments online, someone's Facebook page. However, if they were to run into them on the street, they probably wouldn't um, behave in that same way. So it's really important to ensure that we're conducting ourselves the same way that we would person to person as we do online. So having good digital conduct is about being a respectful and positive participant in online communities. Um, an example of the opposite of that, um, inappropriate digital conduct would be cyberbullying, which I've got just there, okay? All right, so let's move on to our next aspect, digital footprint. Now, digital footprint is a trail or traces of you that can be found online, similar to um, the feed in the sand over here. Um, you will leave a mark on the internet. Now, the difference between the footprint, your digital footprint, and the footprint in the sands here is that these can be washed away by the water. Your digital footprint or the mark that you leave is there forever for everybody to see. That means that potential employers, universities, um, your parents can see that, um, even future partners can see that. So let's make sure that we're leaving something that we're happy for them to see. So if we watch this short little clip here, um, this kind of reiterates my idea. Okay, so every time we're going online, we're logging on, we're throwing out some new personal information, and this information can be searched up by anyone. Um, so that footprint we're creating is out there. People can find it, people can use it. Um, as in the catfish situation, people can copy that information. Um, they can share this information with different people or different organizations so that people can market to you. Um, and this information can also be broadcast. So your personal information can be broadcast out there to the whole world. Not forgetting that it is all permanent, this footprint. We can't wash it away. So considering that, what footprint are we leaving? And what kind of footprint do we want people to see? All right. So digital relationships. Okay, this term refers to both the relationships you develop with people and the relationships that you develop with websites and apps that you use, all right? So I think a lot of the time um, you'd only think of a digital relationship in reference to someone that you meet online, but also those websites and apps that you're using, those uh, you're creating a relationship with them. So for instance, social media, um, logos here, all of these ones here, if you are using any of those, you do have a relationship with them. So the social media websites and apps that you use have created a relationship with you because you agreed to their terms and conditions you gave, um, and as a result, you gave them authority over the content that you post. As an example, 
if you leave put a photo on Facebook, they own that photo. So if for any reason you were to come up in the news, they can sell that photo to the news. So the news instantly has an image of you. All right. So these guys, um, they will use any information that you post up there and they will hold on to that. So there is a big storage of uh, you know, a digital footprint out there for you already, even if you're not aware of it. Right, considering that, how are we able to protect ourselves online, guys? Okay, so you can see I've got a couple of different um, lists or a list here with a couple of different things. We've got uh, privacy settings, so making sure they're adequate, that people um, can't access us, people that we don't want to access us. Um, we've got reporting abuse. This is re abuse that's either happening to us or maybe to other people. Um, making sure that we're asking them to stop and if not that then we're letting authorities know so they can appropriately deal with them keeping our personal information private this is really important again for the catfish scenario um, where where if you were to divulge your address your date of birth or anything like that people can start to work out where you are and start to pinpoint uh, you know, where you live now creating strong passwords this might not seem that important uh, for young people, but as you get older, you're going to have internet banking um, and you don't want someone stealing all your money, and otherwise you're poor. Okay, lastly there, take care if we're meeting people in person. The reason I've got that there is, uh, as it says here on the left, uh, people online may lie about who they really are. Okay, so if you're going to meet someone in person, it may not be the person you think, um, and they may have a different agenda to the meeting so for instance this little video down here this is about a young boy in the UK who went to meet someone that he thought he'd be gaming with and this other person actually murdered him all right so this is why we need to ensure that we're being safe when we're meeting people Okay, so really sad, but that's just an example of the fact that these are genuine hazards out there and that we need to ensure that we're looking at using these types of um, ideas to protect ourselves. Okay, almost at the end, guys. So digital well-being. How do we care for that digital well-being? Um, it means that we're looking after our personal health, um, our safety, our relationships and work-life balance. So looking after our personal health, making sure that when we're using the internet, we're not affecting um, our health, that we're still exercising, and even when we're using it, you know, we're sitting up, we're making sure that we're um, keeping our spine straight, for instance, um, keeping ourselves safe online, as we've discussed, making sure that our relationships are healthy online, and making sure that we've got a work-life balance. By that I mean that we're not always on the internet, we're not always on our device, and we're also out there experiencing the rest of what the world has to offer. Okay, so when we're online, we have the responsibility to act safely and appropriately in digital environments. Um, if you have a look on the left, the little digital citizen here, this has all the different ways for us to make sure that we do act appropriately online. So first of all, using our brain to protect our private information, using our heart, to make sure that we're respecting others all the time, you know, so making sure that we're treating others as we'd like to be treated. Using our gut to stay safe online, so if we're not sure about someone, making sure that um, we're not sharing that personal information with them. Uh, balancing our time, making sure that we're also um, doing other activities. Uh, if you're like me, then you're probably hitting the gym. Uh, and then at the bottom, standing up to cyberbullying, really important that when we see it happening, we report it to someone so that we can uh, deal with it appropriately. All right, guys, so that's about it for us. Thank you very much for watching. Um, there is a quiz for you to move on to, but just to finish, I thought I'd say stay classy, Heratonga. Uh, and I'm really excited by the fact that Facebook has taken off as much as it has. I think it's brilliant that young people are using books again. Um, and from the young people I've spoken to, um, a lot of them have these Facebooks. So, yeah, that's it's just brilliant to see people reading. Cool. Thank you very much.